Gentlemen and ladies, welcome back to my office slash workspace where we tear down security systems and try to reverse engineer what's going on so we can make our own uh, open source implementations. Today we're going to be talking about the long range radio and specifically the IP data tail BAT broadband alarm transmitter. Now, the purpose of a long-range radio is to send report codes, things that happen, doors opening, alarms turning on, alarms turning off. You could send them either through the dialer or through the long-range radio. Both of them are essentially modems. Uh, they just happen on different buses. The dialer happens on the traditional phone line ring and tip. Now, I say traditional, but I think it's also a 12 volt bus like everything else in the system. Long range radio happens over the ECP bus, which is the keypad bus, which means that it is a easier to connect to uh, because you only need the four wires. And But the problem with the long range radio is that they were designed to be secondary systems. And if you just turn on long range radio, um, the system is gonna have to try to dial out first, figure out that that fails. There is a setting in the Vista manual. Right now I have a 10, Vista 10, and we have dynamic signaling priority. And what this says is it's star 55. And if you set it to one, communication device LRR, the long range radio is first selected. And then if it doesn't acknowledge, it'll try the phone. So you can switch to priority and make what was traditionally the backup dialer act as the um, the primary method of communication. Now, what happens when you turn on long range radio, that's star 29, to enable it, uh, the system will send out supervisory packets on the ECP bus, and if you don't answer them, let me show you right here, star 29, enable IP GSM communication, dun, 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 dun. you got to set that to 1, and so if you just set that to one, you don't have something hooked up. Like right now, I'm using an Arduino to mimic a keypad and long range radio. Uh, can you see that? If you don't have one hooked up, the system will send out packets and you'll get a trouble code because you're not acknowledging the packets. Obviously, if you have a long range radio designed for communication and there's a problem with it, the panel is going to check on it and, and, uh, and report when it goes bad or when communication goes down so that you know that the system is down. So how, when you turn it on, you, I, when I start decoding, I just see brand new packets to see F9 packets. I have no idea what they mean or what I'm supposed to do. So I need a real device that's already functioning in order to reverse engineer how I'm supposed to respond. Now it turns out that basically all you're supposed to respond is with four zeros, but I didn't know that. I'll show you that in a minute. This uh, ugly getup right here is how I am uh, sort of listening to the bus. These are two, let me see if I can zoom in. I have two, uh, how do you call it? Two opto isolators opto couplers right here and here what for stepping down the 12 volt bus to a 3.3 volt now I'm powering this this side what would be your right side is 3.3 uh, volt and I'm getting that through my simple FTD uh, USB programmer for Arduino and I'm basically just taking the 3.3 the volts powering up these sides of the opto isolators and then I'm just siphoning this isn't on i'm just siphoning off the bus the yellow and green wire the communication in communication out charging up this side with um 12 volts and okay now that it's on so the right side is charged up with 3.3 volts the left side is just piggybacking off the uh ecp bus right here and this isn't on i'm just quickly using the screw terminals to, to piggyback off and get into this little quick setup right here. You can see a small LED, uh, maybe you can't, do, 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 that 
you know that's just in line that just shows me that my uh, yellow line is on and then so I'm clamping these test leads to my handy dandy uh, Salier knockoff my Chinese knockoff uh, logic analyzer which you can see right there so knockoff brand obviously well not obviously but knockoff brand does the job for right now and it's much much cheaper than the thousand uh, dollar name brand unit so I set this up I couldn't use my system right here because of the way the opto isolators are this is designed to step up and not down and I have a diodes so that you know every keypad energizes the green wire and you can't have that going into your read-only pin I mean maybe I could have jumped or this and flipped this around but whatever just a quick little throwaway breadboard a couple wires most of these wires don't mean anything most of the uh, resistors are just random current limiting I don't know what the values are thousand two thousand whatever I had laying in front of me uh, just to keep it from shorting out I don't really know if they're right or not but it works so I'm able to connect the um, IP data tell to my system and then sort of read what's going on with the yellow and green wires and decode all the packets so we'll move over to the desktop and uh, show you what I've decoded so far uh, before we go over to the computer I'm going to show you another uh, bat from IP data tell now this one's older 2009 the board was printed in so uh, these don't work anymore and I was asked to figure out why they don't work anymore and I believe that uh, the, the IP data tell just doesn't want to support them anymore there might be something wrong with the protocol but these when you plug them in they they do a DNS lookup for a certain IP or a certain domain that comes back to an IP and that IP doesn't have 443 open they immediately try to make a connection to port 443 there's nothing listening on 443 now I have done a little on my own local setup here done a little bit of spoofing and tried to get them to connect to the uh, IP that the newer ones connect to and they they don't seem to want to speak the same protocol they don't seem to want to function um, whatever bits they're sending uh, just doesn't happen to be the same so if you have the earlier revision uh, bat you're probably out of luck I mean you can call uh, IP data tell and ask them why they decided to shut those servers down or do whatever the servers up the dot 50 IP is up but there's just nothing running on it so I, again I don't know if they turned it off on purpose or somebody just forgot to pay their bill or uh, I don't know it's interesting because the newer ones they don't even use DNS they just have a hard-coded uh, set of IPs they try to connect to which is mind-boggling uh, why they would do that um, so my guess is only a matter of time before they'll stop working as well okay off to the computer so now we can see a packet capture of the F9, which are the types of packets that are for long range radio. We see an F9, and then we see a cycle. The next bit is uh, hexadecimal 83, and that's just a cycle counter. You're supposed to respond with something similar. Uh, you add uh, hexadecimal 40 to it. Uh, then the next packet, or the next byte, is how many bytes are in the message including the checksum so we have two more bytes following this these three byte headers and then the panel is sending us five three and f as the checksum uh, so the bottom row is what the panel is sending the top row is the green wire and so we respond with a cycle uh, message and then we're going to respond with four bytes so just three zeros and then the checksum this is so this is what the IP data tile bat is sending back and this is what I needed to figure out that I needed to send back so that I could get my Arduino running without setting off the check long range radio error and then the panel just responds with the cycle that you sent uh, notifying you that it that it 
correctly got the message. So C3. So this byte matches up to your byte. And this is standard. It's just uh, some sort of byte to indicate the cycle. The length uh, is the second packet. Then your data plus a checksum. Now the checksum is like add up all the bytes, subtract one, and then zor it or exclusive or it with FF. And that's the checksum. I don't know why. It's slightly different for the keypads. You do something like you subtract your keypad address before you zor it. I don't know why they subtract one, but they do. And so here I've written down a number of the messages that happen. I, I'm arming and disarming and stuff like that. We can see that this is the panel. Sometimes the panel sends no bytes. It, this is the cycle 03, and then it sends zero for the length. And what you have to do is then respond with, I don't know. I don't know what this is, but uh, 4D0200. And I see that a number of times. Uh, other times the panel, so when the panel sends a 5-3, that's sort of your supervisory status, and that's when you respond with all zeros. Uh, here's another 5-3, 5-3, five, 5-3. Three, five, three, five, three. And then sometimes it sends a really long message. So this is a OB. This is 11 bytes message, and I'm not entirely sure what this all represents. I'm sure it has something to do with the user and the zone and disarm and arm and all that stuff. I'll figure that out once I get the basic firmware written in the Arduino. And then all you do is respond with the cycle. Hey, I got it. And then the panel doesn't do anything back. So certain messages, I think it's 5-8. Um, Anything ending with an 8, you have to respond. Because here's another one that's 4-8. And all you do is respond with the with the message header, the cycle code. And so what we're looking at here is a TCP trace of what the IP data tell does and how it connects phones home to its uh, web service. So you can use a virtual keypad. Uh, how I did this is I directly connected the hardwire into my desktop because my modem is way too far away. And I used um, internet connection sharing under network manager and you get this little pop-up box by typing in nm dash connection dash editor use tab complete figure it out you go to the ethernet you click edit you go to ipv4 settings and the method is shared to other computers and this is really interesting what this does is i'm going to show you uh it so network manager will run another dns mask Here's the first one that just does your DNS. And then here's the second one with a bunch of different flags. And it DNS mask actually has a DHCP server in it. You can see right here the range and the router and all that stuff. And so Network Manager is going to launch another DNS mask. It's going to do all the IP table settings to forward all the traffic onto your Wi-Fi. And so this way you can get your hardwired, whatever they are, little... Um, Internet of Things devices or whatever, you can get them on your Wi-Fi network without having to run a 100-foot network cable if you have a dedicated computer. This is just for me figuring out what's going on. If we look at the trace here, we can see that the, the bat does do a DHCP lookup. It gets an address, but then when we look right here, the very first thing it does is it doesn't do any DNS lookup. It just tries to directly connect to this IP on port 443. Uh, there's a little bit of error and it tries another IP, very same thing, it's just got 40 instead of 17 connects. And it just starts sending data. Um, it's not encrypted with SSL. Wireshark just thinks it is because it's on port 443. Now it is hashed and I'm not entirely familiar on what the hashing mechanism is. Uh, it could be HMAC or something like that. But um, we're not trying to find flaws in their security. It's just interesting. When I'm trying to figure out why these things don't work, I have to figure out what they're trying to do on the network. Are they, um, you know, are they looking, uh, just what's the problem here? Is it something with the device or is it something with the hosted service? And in this case, the older models, it's a problem with the hosted service. They're, they're just, the older models do a DNS lookup, but they're getting um, this IP address, but they're getting 50. And there's no service on 443. They immediately try to open on 443 and just start sending their data. 
then there's no service on there. Now, I did spoofing with DNS mass to get them to connect to 40, and they don't work. So whatever HMAC hash data they're sending back and forth, uh, the server that's on 40 is not designed to listen to it, and there's no server on 50. So the older model ones just are dead in the water. Uh, the newer model ones, they work, but hey, they don't do a, a DNS lookup. It just blows my mind why they would just hard code in a couple IPs to try. Um, yeah, really strange. Real quickly, I was going to say, you can tell it's not SSL because there is no SSL handshake going on. You just see continuation data. Um, you should see a negotiation of certificates and strengths and encoding mechanisms, nonces, and all that stuff. And we don't see that. So we know that this isn't... Whether or not this data is encrypted, it's not using the defined SSL protocol, which includes talking to the server, checking their certificate, negotiating um, encryption methods and all that stuff. So um, I'm not saying this data is sent in clear text by any means. I can't figure out what's in there. Uh, but it's not using the defined SSL standard, which these PICs and uh, Arduinos just cannot do. They don't have the necessary RAM really to pull in and do uh, 20, 48-bit encryption. Um, they could use ChaCha20. Maybe that's what this is doing. I don't really know enough about it, but they're not participating in the defined handshake, so it's not true SSL. And that doesn't mean it's not encrypted. I I don't believe it's encrypted. I believe it's just hashed somehow. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. You're not going to be able to spoof this system without getting physical access to the location and messing with hardwired cables and stuff like that this just isn't um it's not easily hackable by any means i'm not trying to get that point across i'm just trying to show you a little bit about um uh, why some of these devices may just stop working uh in the future and why you should you know why you should use open source so that somebody can come along and fix these things and add uh dns lookups and um change the ip to a different uh, host if need be